And it's okay to say no too. Like if I've got mm-hmm. 300 trades under my belt and it's total crap in my back test, and I'm pretty sure I've captured the different types of markets, it's okay for me to walk away from that. Hey, it's Walter here, and you're at the Think Profit Podcast, where we're going to help you develop a rock solid trading confidence and avoid the potentially endless cycle of system switching. Right, Hugh? That's right. We're going to help you develop a wealth mindset, develop a trading strategy that fits your core personality, and help you overcome the obstacles that stop over 90% of traders. All right, Hugh. Sounds good. You ready to go? Yeah, let's do this. Hey, Hugh. So we have a question from a trader, and this trader says that he's got a big challenge with his mindset and that he really wants to be able to have more mental endurance as a trader. So the question is, what what should this trader do? His name's actually Lawrence. Just wondering, you know, what what are some of the what are some of the things that come to mind? Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. That's a good question. Um mental endurance. So I'm presuming that he thinks he gives up too quickly. So for that I would say, you know, kind of dig into why you give up. And when you are at that point, when you give up, like ask yourself, okay, why do I feel like I'm giving up? Why does it feel like um, I need to give up? And maybe what events in the past might have happened to this person to cause them to give up so quickly. And when you maybe start deconstructing that, um, it can give you some clues as to how you can uh, maybe overcome some of the things. Uh, that's been in your past and you can uh, you know maybe see with like a third party awareness where you could um, kind of heal those things I guess you could say and um, really get out of the that um, that cycle of giving up and giving up giving up and then on the other side of that equation like uh, you know look at some of these YouTube videos or look at some uh, role models that can help you give you a good example of like, you know, somebody who didn't give up and it was very inspiring and, you know, read those kinds of stories and see those kinds of videos on YouTube. And I think those are two good ways that you could get started with that. What, what do you think? I agree. I think you're, you're onto something like, so if I, de- in my mind, if I deconstruct it, I've got two core issues here. I've got one, which is I'm not mentally resilient so like what you're saying, like, like when you look at people who, who've overcome, like actually in my personal life, the biggest looking back on it, one of the biggest things that I did for my training, I was sleeping on my sister's couch. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a car. I didn't have anything. You know, I let, I had to leave Australia cause it kicked me out cause of my visa. So I was back in the States and I was like super bummed out. Right. And my training sucked. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was like, huh? You know, what am I going to do? And she had, uh, she went to San Diego State University. And so I had her library card. That's all I had, really. <laughs> so I, 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 she dropped me off at the library at San Diego State. And I went and read all the trading books I could find there. Okay. And they, they actually had quite a few, not, not, mm. a, not a huge collection, but, and the two that did the, the trick for me were the market wizards and the new market wizards. The reason why is exactly what you said, because I, I I read these stories of these people who were basically in my situation and they had pulled themselves out of it. You know what I mean? These people who had made catastrophic mistakes, lost tons of money when they started trading. And they're like, they learned from that. They pivoted and they never looked back. So I think there's two things here going on. If you're if we if we kind of look at the the underlying thing of this question, which is I need to change my mindset. It's It's my biggest challenge. And I, what I really want is the mental endurance that I need as a trader. So what that means is, I, I believe you're correct that he's talking about Lawrence is talking about having a lot of losing trades and, and you know just not being able to push through. And so let's imagine. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Like these, they have these fake toilet paper rolls where you put it in someone's house and they can't tear the toilet paper. It's like unterrible. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like this, it's like messes with somebody, right? Yeah. So imagine, imagine you have like, imagine you go to your friend's house and you're playing a trick on them and you've got, and they've got a packet of 10 toilet paper, right? In their, you know, bathroom or whatever. And so you take five of these unterrible toilet paper rolls and you stick them in the, in the toilet paper package, right? Mm-hmm. Knowing that eventually... They're going to pull one of those out. They're going to slap it on the thing and and they're not going to be able to use it. It's going to be real <laughs> funny, right? And you're going to, that's your joke, right? Okay. <laughs> well, do you get upset if the next roll they 
they you say, hey, you're out of toilet paper, man. And your friend comes and gets, grabs a roll and puts it on there, but it's not one of the unterrible ones. No, you don't get upset because, you know, eventually <laughs> yeah. they're going to get it, right? Yeah. It's the same thing with trading. Eventually, you're going to get to the winning trades, right? You're just going through a lot of losers right now. So there's no reason to get upset, right? So there's that probability uh, statistical element to trading that we have to come to grips with. And the other side of it is the resilience, exactly what you're talking about, where it's like, okay, what am I going to do? Okay, because you start thinking what's called catastrophic thinking. You start thinking, oh, I'm never going to be able to, you know, training's never going to work for me. I keep losing. Every time I see the good signals, I'm sleeping. I wake up and I know I miss them. And then, you know, and when I'm awake, I, you know, I take these trades and they're terrible. I'm getting all the losers. What am I going to do? You know, and so you, you start like snowballing in your mind, right? So what you need are resilience exercises. So you could say, okay, hold on now. I've done my back testing. I know I have a 52% win rate. Okay. So that means about half of my trades are going to be losers. All right. I know I've had seven losing trades in a row and it seems like the world's crashing in on me, but is that really like unexpected? Let's look back at the last 50 trades. Oh, okay. Last 50 trades, I've had 22 winners and 28 losers. Okay. Yeah. I maybe have a little bit, you know, more losing trades, but it's within the range of what's expected. So really, this is just, you know what I mean? This is what's expected. Eventually, I'll probably get on a run and I'll have a, a few more winning trades at some stage and we'll we'll even it out, right? Because we're right around 50%. So, you know, this is the sort of thing that you can do to like change your thinking. And you want to think probabilistically and you don't want to allow yourself to get into that catastrophic thinking. Those are the two things I, for this problem, which is like, in my estimation, it's one of the biggest problems that traders have which is dealing with the the tough part of trading, which is mm -hmm. all these losers in a row. And it's why we move away from perfectly good systems, to be honest. Like a lot of traders will dump perfectly good strategies because of this issue, right? Mm -hmm. So you got you got to have the two pieces, like the think in terms of statistics and then also uh, thinks in terms of reality and don't think about, you know, all these things that are going to happen and snowball in your mind. You start making up stories that, you know, it's all going to go pear-shaped, right? It's yeah. not, that's not necessarily true. In fact, it's, quite unlikely so yeah that's what i would say yeah i agree and um to take it one step further you mentioned something interesting too with the back testing so i think there's a potential downfall there where people start back testing and then the results are maybe kind of mediocre or even pretty bad and then there's that element of how do i keep continue back testing also so maybe you have any thoughts on that one yeah that's a good point well that's a really good point on that there are a lot of problems that can be overcome if your if your risk is, you know, if you deal with the risk, the way your risk algorithm that you employ for your strategy, right? So, like, so that can help. But beyond that, I have to choose what I'm going to be comfortable with as a trader. So, if I'm back testing and I see, you know, I've had nine, ten months of drawdown, I think it's okay if I say, well, this isn't for me. But there's a flip side to that, which is, and this is really important. Okay, I'll give you an example. So one of my coaching students just posted his backtesting results on a strategy. And I said, I said, look, I know this strategy really well. What you've done is essentially you've backtested a really good year. Okay. And I don't expect that this will they'll this will hold. In fact, I think if you push forward the next couple of years after I think he did like 2020 or something like that. And I said, do 21 and 22 and see what happens. He did. And he came back and said, wow, look at that drawdown. I go, yeah, I know. I lived through that drawdown. I, I <laughs> traded that drawdown. Like I traded the system through that drawdown. I know exactly what you're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And so, uh, but I was using a different, like he was just, you know, fixed fractional system. I was using a different meth fixed fractional in 1%, 2%. 2%. He was actually risking 3%. So I, um, you know, he said, wow, that's a deep drawdown. I said, look, you know, this is going to be more about what you get. You know what I mean? It's, I said the profit factor is actually a little bit lower, I think, on his first estimate. So, yeah, so so you can choose to walk away, right? But more importantly, to your point, you really should have different types of markets. So if you go back and you zoom out on your backtest, you go, wow, I backtested 15 months, but that was like a roaring trend for most of that 15 months. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and find a year or a couple of years where it's sort of range bound and not really going anywhere. And let's see where we are with that, right? And then see, you know what I mean? You want to make sure that you get the different types of markets 
in your back test, like the the downtrends, the uptrends, the sideways tight trends, the sideways volatile trends. Like those are the types of markets you want to uh, get, so that you know, okay, all right, you know, this is how I, I, I'm gonna, gonna expect this to work. Like uh, I did another one, another analysis of a system yesterday where I introduced it to people and I said, look, this is a system. This is when I traded it back in 2009. I said it might be worth looking at, you know, and we looked at it in, I, I, in my video and I I found it was looking really good, except for this year. It mm. looked horrible. So <laughs> if I started trading it in January, uh, you know what I mean? I'd be like, this sucks. This mm -hmm. totally sucks. So I would expect that eventually it'll start kicking in again. But, you know, who knows when that is? So that's yeah, you bring up a really good point. You, you really like you want to make sure you capture different types of markets. And it's okay to say no too. Like if I've got mm -hmm. 300 trades under my belt and it's total crap in my back test, and I'm pretty sure I've captured the different types of markets, it's okay for me to walk away from that, right? Mm -hmm. Or 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 modify it and then read, you know, try again. Yeah. I also think it's useful to have like a, a little toolbox of maybe three, four, five um, potential optimizations you could do. Like you could, um, you know, change the risk. You could change the position. Uh, the um not the position size but that would be the risk but um you could change the type of you know risk you you use you could use you could change the exit um like like we've talked about before a quick and dirty one is just to do a one to one uh risk to reward and see how that goes and then you could go to like a one to two so just having very very basic tests that you can run on it and try to optimize it really quickly and if that doesn't go then okay you know maybe that's not for you but um I think that's another yeah way that's to go definitely that's right and and i my favorite one is to say okay what happens if this uh if you had a trailing exit to this like if mm -hmm. you had a instead of you know you, you're going for two to one what what happens if you you know split it up and go for two to one for half your position the other half you trail it and see does, does that going to add to the do you know what i mean so yeah that the, the average winner and that sort of thing that that's that's all like that should be uh typically what most traders do is they'll add a filter on the front end thinking mm, that yeah. they're going to get you know, the better signals yeah. yeah, but really, you're right. It's risk and exits. Those are the fruitful areas. Um, almost always, the most fruitful areas for you are going to be how you manage risk. What are your risk rules? And that includes like moving to break even or moving to where you have 0.5 R risk instead of one R risk. And, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do mm -hmm. in terms of risk rules. Also, definitely the exits like that is amazing. Like when people change the exits and they go, wow, this is a totally different strategy. I'm like, yep. Mm -hmm. And look what you did to the entry. Nothing. These are the exact same trades. You just got out of them differently. So yeah, that's definitely, definitely a fruitful area. Yeah, totally. All right. Thanks, Walter. Thank you. All information in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not trading or investment advice.